Welcome to the Fast Leader Podcast, where we uncover the leadership life hacks that help you to experience breakout performance faster and rocket to success. And now, here's your host, customer and employee engagement expert, and certified emotional intelligent practitioner, Jim Rimbaugh. Thanks, Kimberly. Welcome, Fast Leader Legion. Today's show is going to be one that's going to be from a person who has a global view on leadership, has a phenomenal sense of humor, and is somebody that we all can get a lot of good tips from when it comes to leading ourselves and others. And his name is Muhammad Latib. I've known Muhammad for several years, but for you, you'll want to know that he was the former dean of Gwinnett Mercy University School of Business and Center for Lifelong Learning. But prior to that, he was the vice president for program and strategic development at the Sales University, where he headed the MBA program and led the university's international initiatives that resulted in the implementation of programs in Romania, Italy, and India. He's actually been the developer and facilitator of executive and corporate training programs for over 35 years across the U.S. and globally with topics that include strategic thinking, leadership, teamwork, effective communications, multi-rater feedback, conflict management, change management, and customer service. He's also served as a consultant and mentor and coach to senior executives for such global brands like Siemens, Air Products, Dominion Textiles, Swift Textiles, Pennsylvania Power and Light, and Smithfield Meats. Muhammad has traveled extensively across the globe, lived on three continents for extended periods, and even hiked the Indian Range and Amazon and Sub-Saharan Desert Jungles. He's familiar with eight languages at various levels of fluency and, ha- and is a keen golfer and yoga practitioner. We may have to figure out how all those languages fit into the golf play. Uh, I may need to learn a language in order to get better. But today, he's actually a beaming grandfather and the chief operating officer and co-founder of Periscope IQ, where he leads the company's practice and employee in customer engagement. Mohammed Latib, are you ready to help us get over the hump? I am indeed, Jim, and it's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for the invitation. Oh, it, the honor is ours for sure, especially mine. Now, I've given our listeners a brief introduction about you, but can you please tell us a little bit about yourself so we can get to know you even more? Well, I think uh, the introduction is uh, fair. Uh, I think what I would weave into that introduction is the fact that uh, I have uh, lived on three different continents over my life. And as a result of uh, being on three different continents from very early in my childhood uh, to where I am today, the experiences that I've harnessed over the years has allowed me to be who I am. And part of the agenda for this show is indeed to share with your listeners anything that I can convey via the experiences I have had. Well, definitely. And we're looking forward to that. All of us, I think, are inspired by quotes. And on this show, we like to share some of the most favored leadership quotes uh, by the people who were getting the opportunity to learn more about and learn their, about their stories and the ways that they've gotten over the hump. So I'm sure you've had literally thousands and thousands to choose from throughout your career. Is there a leadership quote or two that maybe stands out? Let's try with the, your most favorite and see where we can go with that. Uh, Jim, that's an interesting question. I'm not sure that uh, over the years after having read as much about the leadership uh, phenomena in the literature, as well as in my experience, that I had a favorite quote. However, I will tell you that the best definition of leadership that I came across that was not in the textbooks that I've read is uh, one that is practiced at Gore and Associates, W.L. Gore and Associates, well known for having produced Gore-Tex. And I visited the company many years ago and was fascinated by the fact that they treat leadership as a fluid phenomena. And that's manifested in their definition of leadership, which is simply this. You are a leader as long as you have followers, which simply also means that once your followers cease to follow you, your leadership status has changed. I find that quite fantastic. I should say to you that only recently did I come across a series of observations that resonate very well for me. And I think they're important for anybody that's interested in 
being a leader. And so if I may, let me share that very short uh, poem, if you would, or perhaps even in some cases a prayer for many. And it goes as follows. It says, take not away my happiness when you give me prosperity. When you give me strength, take not away my sagacity. When you give me glory, take not away my humility. When you give me humility, take not away my dignity. And take not away my grace when you give me authority. And that last piece, I hope, resonates for your listeners because leadership has a responsibility and there's automatically, automatically authority. If there's anything that should resonate for the audience is the importance of maintaining one's grace with the authority and responsibility that comes with leadership. Now, thank you for sharing that, because one of the things that we're trying to do at the Fast Leader Show is kind of redefine what leadership is in today's society. And the fact is, is that we all have to lead. We, and that includes ourselves. And even what you were sharing with us, there's so many things associated with me being true to myself and the things that I have to do in regards to being graceful to myself. And you have to do those things first before you actually could even have any followers so thank you so much for sharing that. I think that will resonate with so many different people who's part of the Fast Leader Legion. Now, when you talk about that quote, and again, many of the learnings that you've come to uh, pass, uh, you know, there's probably some really good opportunities where you can say, you know, this particular moment and that hump that I had to get over kind of defined who I am as a person and really helped me go down a path that, uh, you know, led to where I wanted to go. You know, uh, and so can you take us back to a time where you've had a hump to get over and, and, and what that actually, you know, what actually happened? Uh, Jim, if I may, can I uh, vary your question slightly without losing the substance of what you're looking for? Certainly. By uh, sharing a thread of my life where there were seminal experiences that influenced who I am as a human being. And I'm sure you as your listeners would appreciate that in order to be a effective leader, it begins with self and awareness of who we are and awareness of our values and awareness of our disposition uh, towards the rest of the world. And I hearken back to uh, my days as a teenager when I was in a boarding school in the Himalayan mountains of northern Pakistan. And I was there as a foreign student because I originate from South Africa. So I was this young lad at 14 at the end of the academic year when we were packing up our luggage and our clothes and the school was closed and we're going to be on three months winter vacation. And we drove down in the school bus from the mountains with all of my friends and colleagues and we arrived at the destination where every one of my friends' family, friends, relatives, if you would, were there to receive them with all the hugs and love and happiness. And there was this merriment about saying goodbye. And it didn't take long for me to realize that all of them had left and I was standing there alone at the bus parking lot with my luggage, wondering what it is that I would do. It was an important experience because it forced me to begin to become aware of the urgency and importance of developing resilience, developing inner strength, uh, coming to terms with one's values, being decisive, because I literally packed up my stuff, got into a cab, and found myself in an expensive hotel to ponder further what my next day was going to be like. Wow. That's... Very powerful. And so such of a lesson to learn at such a young of an age. Please share with us some more. Well, uh, you know, I then go back to another, uh, if you would, uh, an aha moment uh, that has reminded me ever since then that I need to always challenge my assumptions because unless one has validated one's assumptions, the interpretation of the world that we're in can be problematic. So here's my story. Uh, I was milling around with some friends and we were having conversations and an old man with a white beard came to us begging for money. 
And I responded with tremendous disrespect in English and made the heroic assumption that the individual I was being disrespectful to didn't understand me, except to learn very quickly and much to my shock when this old man turned around and said this to me. He said, sir, you have every right to say no to me, but you have no right to disrespect me. You cannot imagine how I wanted the earth below me me to open up and just swallow me up because I had in fact violated such an important human principle by making the assumption that he didn't understand the English language and he clearly felt disrespected and I had vowed that the dignity of human beings should be fundamental to any form of leadership responsibility that I would have in my life. Yeah, and even here in the past couple of years, as you and I have uh, had the opportunity to get to know each other a little bit more, uh, it seems to me like you've also started to do that more for yourself, and meaning, you know, be more, have more dignity for self. Can you share us, uh, share with us something a little bit more recently? Um, I'm thinking about something specific, but I don't want to bait you. Uh, please, please, talk, please bring us up a little bit more up to date. Well, I'm not sure what you were going to bait me about, Jim. I'd welcome that because uh, then I'd know what to talk about. (laughs) So (laughs) I'm going to take the license to interpret what you're asking for rather broadly and share with you what to me is very important these days, uh, despite my years of seasoning in various professional roles. I am seriously committed to very personal issues such as my health. I am particularly concerned about my health, and so I exercise regularly. I eat exceptionally well, and I am a fanatic practitioner of yoga. Uh, I think the combination of those habits, if you would, allows me to continue to ponder about excellence. And I think if I am ready to embrace the challenge of being a healthy human being, both physically, emotionally, and psychologically, I could continue to journey down paths of leadership responsibilities. You absolutely hit what I wanted you to share. So thank you so much for doing that. All right. Now, what we want to do is pick up the pace a little bit and have a little bit of fun and get ready for the Hump Day Hoedown. Okay, Muhammad, the Hump Day Hoedown is a time where I ask you a lot of questions fast and you give us robust answers fast to help us move onward and upward faster. Mohammed, are you ready to hoe down? I think so, Jim. Let's do it. All right. All right. So what do you think is holding you back from being an even better leader today? The opportunity to play a lot more golf so that I can interact with my friends and take their money. <laughs> Love it. Maybe I'll get there someday. All right. So what's the best leadership advice you feel that you have ever received? If you follow me, you'll always get ahead because together we can conquer lots and lots of obstacles. Oh, the togetherness. I love that piece. All right. So what is one of your secrets that you believe contributes to your success? Discipline. I cannot emphasize the urgency and importance of engaging in a disciplined lifestyle. Mm. What do you feel is one of your best resources that helps you lead in business or life? You know, I I cannot hearken to any book or piece of literature because I think they all contribute tremendous value. I can simply go to the fact that uh, I believe in awareness and continued exploration of who we are as human beings. And so part of my ongoing uh, discipline is to meditate every day. Mm, So meditation is a good resource. Yes, sir. Now, I know you've talked about not necessarily having one book, but is there kind of one that you kind of stand out that you would actually recommend for our readers? You know, I uh, I love to read uh, uh, Malcolm Gladwell's books, even though they're not particularly on the uh, topic of leadership, but they offer you lots of stories. And I think stories are very powerful metaphors where leadership lessons are woven. Much yes. like we have on the Fast Leader Show. So yes, we'll have to put some links to a couple of your favorite of Malcolm Gladwell uh, books on our show notes page, which you'll be able to find at fastleader.net forward slash Mohammed 
Latib. All right, Mohammed, we're back. We're down to our last question for the hump day hoedown. All right, so here we go. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning and you were 25 years old again. You are supposed to begin a new job as a manager of a team that has been underperforming and disengaged, but you have a blessing. You've actually retained all the wisdom and skill that you currently have. Now, your task, of course, is to turn this team around. So you get up, you get ready, you head out to work. What do you do now? Wow, Jim, how much time do we have? You've just given me the license to dream and be wishful, which fortunately we never have to pay for. Mm, True. And so indeed, if I were to turn the clock back with all the wisdom I have and be a 25-year-old that's going to oversee a bunch of disengaged human beings, I would find that extremely exciting and I would bring the entire package of uh, lessons that I've uh, been able to garner over the years and actually express my leadership style to get them engaged through all of what I've already shared, which is to really begin to express my values around human dignity. People are fundamentally good, and I think if you treat them well, they will step up to perform. So true. Thank you very much for sharing that. Muhammad Latib, it is an honor to spend time with you today. Can you please share with the Fast Leader listeners how they can connect with you? Indeed. Uh, Please feel free to have your fast leader audience connect with me via email at mlatib at periscopeiq.com. They can also go to our periscopeiq.com website where they will find me and all of my contact information. And uh, they're certainly invited to reach out with me at any time. And of course, they can check me out on LinkedIn where I actually extend an invitation for anybody uh, to reach out to me. Perfect. We'll also put a link to those on the show notes page. Muhammad Latib, thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom. The Fast Leader Legion honors you and thanks you for helping us get over the hump. Woo-hoo! Thank you for joining me on the Fast Leader Show today. For recaps, links from every show, special offers, and access to download and subscribe, if you haven't already, head on over to fastleader.net so we can help you move onward and upward faster. 